All right, thank you for your attention once again, ladies and gentlemen, as we move along with today's proceedings uh, for what has been a fantastic morning so far. Uh, a reminder that this is the last event before we have a break for lunch. So there's plenty of networking that can go on uh, during the lunch break next door in Ballroom B. So uh, we'll, we'll move along today. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank today's ambassadors and also dignitaries that are here supporting the event. Also, as part of the World Sustainable Business Forum for 2021, uh, we'd like to thank the people that have helped make today possible. Powered by Siemens Health and Ears and supported by Abu Dhabi-based G42, Fly Dubai, Jotun Middle East, GE, Dulsco and DNV. So we, we thank all of our partners for their support. COVID-19 highlighted the need for transformation in the UAE's healthcare system. The pandemic underscored how both innovation and technology will reshape the healthcare sector of the future, and sustainable healthcare innovation is the need of the hour to develop new or improved health systems, products and technologies, and services and deliver methods that improve people's health. We've got a great panel that we're going to be having a chat to today, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Dr. Hawla Al-Hajjal, who is the director of DHA's Zabil Health Center. Thank you very much uh, for coming along. Niaz Muhammad, head of sales for Lower Gulf Siemens Health and Ears. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Dr. Fatih Mehmet Gal, the CEO of Faki University Hospital. Give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Halna, I know you're still going through some of your notes, so I'll, 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 move, I'll move to the end of the panel first. I do traditionally go ladies first, but uh, Dr. Halla is a, has been very generous with her time to make it down here today. So, uh, Dr. Fatia, I'll ask you about the pandemic. It's really been a massive enabler for digital healthcare solutions. You know, we've got QR codes on the table, which two years ago, if you said we were going to events and there's QR codes at restaurants, no one would have believed you. But now it's certainly the normal. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, digital healthcare solutions, how are private hospitals adept adapting to integrated, sustainable models of care. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me here. Uh, after this COVID time, this is my first event, and I really appreciate for the invite, and it's a pleasure being here. Um, digital healthcare has been always on the table. Uh, let's start from this point. I had my first uh, virtual consultation with my patient in year 2001 uh, with an offshore shell uh, oil company and we were providing this service. And at that time, the infrastructure was not ready for that. And it was very difficult to understand the worries, other things, but now this COVID actually helped us to have some acceleration in the digital uh, transformation and today things are completely different. As a private hospital, we have been looking at too many solutions. We have never thought that our patients will not be able to visit us or our operation theaters will be closed just to manage the uh, capacity. So today we are talking about the new world actually when it comes to the digital healthcare. It is connected care. Under the connected care topic, we're collecting lots of services in order to make the access to the healthcare easier from our patients, from the families, and also from the doctors and point. So then today the technology helps us to integrate all the solutions together and then operate them together at the same time. What we did, we are a hospital and we are not a technology company. We definitely looked at things from a different angle and we created partnerships. And within these partnerships we worked together with Apple, Siemens, Cisco, and we set together with them and we ask their advisors if it comes to the digital healthcare which solutions they have and how do they advise to integrate together because if we look at this whole healthcare service providing for ages we can see that there has been some Chinese walls in some disciplines like the pharmacists have always been considered separate hospitals separate but today with this digital healthcare they came together and with the government as well we started working even closer under this digital healthcare as a private hospital so lots of things are changing but we see this as an opportunity and I believe that this opportunity will continue giving us benefits. I mean, your first point was great, you know, and it's been spoken about so often, the need for video conferencing is just the norm, you know, and a couple of years ago, it certainly wouldn't have been accepted. Uh, Dr. Halder, you know, speaking about those digital changes, hopefully COVID-19, you know, the worst is behind us and as we look forward, what do you think the role of digital health uh, in the fight against these times that no one could have predicted, what do you think we've learnt about that so far? 
So first of all, uh, you can hear me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. nice and close. Thank you yeah. for having me. Uh, first of all, I want to, uh, to tell you that we are all living in fourth industrial revolution and we don't have any choice. So we have to adapt technology in every sector. Okay, so the challenge is in adapting uh, technology was a bit challenging, especially in healthcare system. So um, before COVID, we saw that um, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid announced the 50 charter and he wanted a doctor for every citizen through telemedicine. So we can see how our leader is a visionary leader. So they expected to, the, uh, to have a technology before even the pandemic. So we work on that and we work on in, uh, initiatives of telemedicine and we launch that telemedicine. But the adapt adaptation rate was very low and the acceptance rate and the culturally was not very much, okay? It was very low at the beginning and we face a problem to, um, to make the people and community accept that changes but later on when we had pandemic yeah it is uh, we don't want it, uh, it we, I can't say that those force us to adopt the technology but this is the fact so when we had the pandemic people could not go out it's whether because of the lockdown or because they are afraid or because there is a multiple reasons for that so they wanted to sustain a health care service we want as a government we have to maintain the sustainability of healthcare service and we have to provide the healthcare service for the whole community. So how we could provide that is through the telemedicine. So people experience that. So they could know, they could recognize how easy is the process and imagine that you are at home calling your doctor through the uh, video con consultations and get out what is the lab results and how is the situations and the door will reach you up to your door. So the life is it's easy. So the easiness of the technology is to make our life easy and to make the service customer uh, journey it's a better way and in a simple way. So uh, this is it's about the technology. So I think with the pandemic, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we could adapt the technology. We could accept the culture change because telemedicine was culturally not accepted, especially in the Middle East. I won't say that in a forum because they, there they started it earlier, maybe 20 years back. But for us, they could not accept it, how we will expose to the video consultations, how we will maintain the privacy, what about the regulations. But everything was changed in a very fast time and we could see the results. It's, it's, um, the statistic was from hundreds, it's reached up to thousands teleconsultations in one month. So that is the big, ch uh, the big change and big achievement. So uh, just staying with you, Dr. Howler, do you think that the, the healthcare industry was prepared to deal with the, 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 the sudden change? I mean, you, you mentioned early on that necessity is often the reason behind, you know, creating new solutions. Um, but do you think the healthcare industry here was really prepared to deal with the sudden shift because of the pandemic? See, at the beginning, it was a big challenge because it is not a healthcare system only. It is a multidisciplinary teams and it is a different sectors, different government and different stakeholder. They have to collaborate with each other. But I, I can see within one month, we could make a, a new rules, m new changes, and, every, and even the community can feel it. They could see how the changes, and today we can see how the... Uh, the other countries is in lockdown, they reopen, lockdowns, and Dubai, they are maintaining, and we are here in the big conference. So this is how we can adapt these things. So um, I think um, all, each government should be agile government. They have to adopt changes. They have to, ac to see what is the, uh, the environment's changes or risk, and then adopt their services, their policy, their regulations according to the situations. So this is the change with us. So we were, I can see that we were agile government. We could adapt and we can maintain the change and we are always adapting the guidelines, the protocol. And I know that it is some things frustrating for the community, but they can feel how, the, how life has been changed and it became comfortable. And now we are maintaining this life just like before. It's a yeah. constant change, constant, yes. constant evolution. Uh, Niaz, I see you waiting patiently there for your turn. Uh, thank you. Uh, your role that you've got in head of sales uh, working for uh, Siemens Health and Ears, you know, sustainability is part of Siemens DNA. It's, it's why it's been such a successful company for a long time. Uh, from your experience, how do you think hearing these stories about how the government and the private sector can work together to improve access of healthcare and then also quality of life? All right. Uh, thanks for having me here. It's my pleasure to be here. I think firstly, I would like to thank uh, 
the UAE government authorities who, you know, made sure that we can have a, let's say, much better life during pandemic. We should be all grateful to, for that. And also all the healthcare operators like DHA or FAKI or all the private and government uh, healthcare operators to provide the right services at the right time. I think UAE has done a great job in handling the pandemic. So thanks to them. Uh, now, in terms of uh, Siemens and uh, sustainability, essentially, you know, Siemens is one company which invests more than 10% of their revenue into research and development. And this research and development is focusing on, let's say, quality up, cost down, meaning, you know, give better services, better functionality at lower cost position, because we all know that uh, healthcare uh, is, is expensive, is costly, it cannot sustain at the current uh, cost positions and it's not reaching all the population as it should be reaching. Probably in UAE we are in good position, but if you look at globally, there is a long way to go in, uh, in getting a, a, a better access for the population. Yeah? So we are you know, bringing solutions which have, let's say, in a, in a design phase, uh, let's say using lower power, you know, smaller footprint, smaller carbon dioxide emissions, uh, a lot of things Siemens is taking in consideration to bring solutions out there which helps uh, patient care and, uh, and uh, access better care for the population, yeah. So in, in working about those, that access for the population, you know, and staying stay with you, Niaz, sustainable healthcare systems, really only going to come about when you can incorporate solutions from all the factors. So, you know, you improve healthcare while you've also got to minimise a lot of the negative effects that happen on the environment. Uh, in your work with uh, Siemens Health and Ears, can you, I know you're in sales, but can you give us a, a bit of an insight in what Siemens are doing this in order to, to be more sustainable with the healthcare systems? So, I mean, uh, see, uh, what I talked about is what uh, Siemens is doing globally. Uh, I can also talk a little bit about what we do uh, in UAE locally. So, uh, we are one of the companies who have been a visionary uh, in the sense that we had our own, let's say, uh, technical team, which is a very important component in healthcare to maintain and make sure that the systems are in the best shape and, you know, used in the best way. We also have a big education team which is focusing to ensure that, you know, all the, you know, greatest uh, softwares or applications are really used in the patient care. So, you know, there are a couple of things which Siemens have been kind of uh, visionary because we have that team uh, in the, on the ground in UAE for last 30 or more years. So, you know, it's also important not just the technology but also how you can ensure that the customers are able to use those technology in helping in the patient care. So that's one big aspect. Uh, off late, we also started something we call Innovation Think Tank. Innovation Think Tank is an, is an opportunity for bringing, uh, let's say, different stakeholders in healthcare. So, you know, the challenge always is that, you know, a lot of people are working towards sustainability in, do in their own silos. But, you know, to bring different stakeholders is a challenge, yeah? So there is regulatory authorities, there is healthcare operators, there is technology companies like us. So we provided this uh, platform where, you know, the academia, the students, clinicians, the C-levels of hospitals, they could come together and, you know, find some common ground in developing solutions uh, to the local challenges, yeah? Obviously, UAE doesn't have a lot of manufacturing, you know, or research and development uh, happening. Uh, this is our way of uh, kind of contributing to this society and the country, yeah? And it was uh, highly appreciated by all the different stakeholders, yeah? So that was a very cool thing to do. You do have to keep those stakeholders happy, but you know, you, your point you made is clear. When you introduce new technology, you've got to be able to uh, you know, ensure that people can use it. When I'm teaching my mother how to use WhatsApp, and she's in Australia, sometimes I think it's quicker to fly 14 hours to Sydney, spend two weeks in quarantine, than have to try and talk over the phone how best to work the situation. When you speak about those stakeholders, I, I want to take that point to Dr. Fatih. You know, when you're looking at all the stakeholders, and you think about what we sort of need to achieve, and you think about uh, availability, you think about the accessibility, uh, you think about the affordability that's needed for some of these key issues uh, in healthcare that the pandemic brought to a lot of people's attention. 
How do you keep all the players in those ecosystems cooperating to ensure you get world-class patient care? I appreciate, I appreciate. Let's go back to the connected care uh, point. And then uh, within the connected care, government or the private hospital, we all have one problem. It is capacity management. Because the capacity what we have in healthcare is one of the most expensive capacity in the industries in the world. So we have to use it mindfully. So when we look at the capacity management, the healthcare is becoming expensive. Why? Because the use is not well regulated from the patient point of view. If I have a headache and if I go to a professor who is time, I mean, is very expensive, then it means that I'm not going to use the capacity in the right way. Digital healthcare today helps us to create a sustainable methodology for this one. Digital healthcare helps us to manage the preventive healthcare before coming to the hospital, triage for the people before again coming to the hospital. When they come to the hospital, this digital healthcare and then the AI solutions, they help us the path of the patient in the best way. So then we can create a sustainable solution around this one. But we have one problem on top of all those things. Today, we are bringing lots of solution to our medical professionals. But do they really know how to use those medical uh, I mean systems? Because if I ask to my cardiologist to arrange a virtual consultation for a friend, my cons uh, consultant is telling me, look, I have never received any training how to manage a patient over the screen. So then we have to also prepare those things. So with this way, we are a group we have been managing daily around 10,000 patients in Saudi Arabia and then here. We have built all those systems together and every day we keep training our people. We have a technology company, we are creating all those integrations, the programs and everything just to manage the capacity in the best way. Otherwise, it's going to be wasted. So then the patients will not be happy and insurance company will say that it is too much expensive. For the pediatric clinic, today we have started the vaccination services at home. Because if we just make our pediatric clinics by the mothers coming in just for the vaccination, the real patients, on the other hand, will not be able to see the doctor. So digital health and those technology solutions, they are helping us to manage all this capacity in the best way. And with this way, we also create the collaboration together with the government. Today, government has wonderful solution called Nabith. With Nabith, we are now feeding all the information to them. So even from their side, with a birth view, they know what capacity the, the city has and within this way they can manage it. And then the UAE leadership, we have a project here, doctor for each citizen living here in the UAE. This way, with the technology, we are able to extend our services and then cover this gap over there. So what UAE is doing in a very strategic way, collaborating all with all the stakeholders together from the technology point of view, from the operator and then the government. And we are just structuring the right capacity in order to make the accessibility ready for the people at any time whenever it is required. That is why in the pandemic time, UAE was successful. Other co co countries and then other managements, they failed in this one and they couldn't know how to manage this capacity. And I think this is what the take away we got from these pandemic times. No, I think we could all agree on that. When you see the high vaccination rates, you can see countries, uh, Australia, South Korea, going back into lockdown 18 months on. You know, uh, it really does uh, reinforce what you said. Uh, but you mentioned, you know, how hard so many of the factors are, certainly in your work at the Fakir University Hospital. Uh, with your position there with university hospitals, how do you ensure that next generation, you know, are educated, you develop the local healthcare workforce, but how do you keep the best talent here working? How do you manage to be able to keep talent retention as part of a sustainable healthcare? I think this is the most important question uh, within all this panel discussion. The issue within the pandemic times, we understood uh, the value of the most important asset what we have in the organization. It is human resources. Human resources wise, some of the uh, private healthcare operators, actually they couldn't manage it in the right way to manage the emotion and then to manage the support and to manage those capacity in those difficult days. Today you know what's happening, the best talent is already moving and then migrating to other I mean hospitals who have managed this in the right way. So first of all, we should never forget that the most important asset in the hospital is the human resources. We have to treat them regardless the pandemic, difficult days, the good days in the best way. They will retain. On top of that, we have to give them the right tools with a 
proper education for them to utilize those solutions. On top of all those things, we have a medical faculty in Jeddah in Saudi and we are going to open it here. We have started changing the curriculum in the medical faculty when we are teaching the new physicians. We started adding the technology factor into it. Before, it was not the case. Before, I mean, learning how to manage the patient over the screen or the hospital information software, the other things were not the case. Now these are the important part of the curriculum. With all those solutions, we, will be, uh, we believe that we will be able to manage the uh, talent in the best way and then retain them in the hospital. It, it certainly is a huge challenge, as you said. It's one of the most important questions. As we uh, look to wrap up today's important, important conversation, uh, Niaz, looking at some of the challenges that you're facing, uh, what do you think are the main challenges facing uh, the healthcare sector at present in terms of trying to be as sustainable as possible? Uh, I think the main challenge is, as I was kind of alluding earlier, is to bring, you know, different stakeholders together. So, you know, a lot of, uh, let's say, innovation, a lot of uh, sustainability initiatives are being taken up by different technology providers or different operators or different regulators. But, you know, to bring them uh, in one direction is a, is a huge challenge. I mean, it's not easy. So that, I would say, if uh, that could be taken care, then that will have a, you know, a accelerated, you know, uh, uh, forward moment in terms of sustainability, you know, in, 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 let's say, getting more access to care, you know, at a better cost position, higher quality, yeah. So bringing all those different stakeholders is, is a challenge, yeah. One of the things what we Siemens is doing also is that we are moving away from doing, you know, the routine transactional business with our customers. We are moving into value partnerships, which are like, uh, you know, seven-year contract with customers where, you know, uh, there is a very tight relationship between us and the customer. So, uh, you know, we are not looking at a, at a deal as such, but we are looking at a offering a holistic solution where they get the right technology, right education, right training, you know, bringing all the, all the best of the best to the, to the customer. And then this is like a win-win for both parties because we also are kind of uh, supporting those customers to come up with those value partnership, yeah? So, yeah, that, that's how uh, the market is developing and uh, we are uh, pushing that very hard with most of our customers, yeah. It's an ongoing challenge, isn't it? It's a day-to-day -day challenge to try and evolve. Uh, the same question to you, uh, Dr. Hala. Uh, in your experience as the director of DHA's uh, Zabil Health Centre, what do you feel are some of the main challenges facing the sector in, in terms of being sustainable and sustainability? Uh, I think it is um, ecosystem, okay? We have to develop ecosystem. It's not only government. Today, the, the directions of the government to have a government-private partnership, and we have a, a different stakeholder to adapt the technology. We have startups, we have a big company, we have maybe um, um, innovative uh, people, so we have to, to provide them an area where they can learn and try. The experimental, it's not there. So I, I think um, we have to work more into the research and development. Um, the technology, it's helping us a lot, especially in filtering the cases and making the management of the simple case so the hospital will be preserved for the complicated cases. But uh, and another challenge, it's not a challenge, it's an area we have to look on it uh, with the technology we have a different system. We have uh, electronic medical record. We have a uh, smartphone. We have a different source of data. So we have to move on for a big data uh, analysis and tools to understand better the population need. And even in, in, in a case of a crisis, so we can understand a real-time data and we can manage it in a better way. So I think the move, uh, the move or the directions now is to uh, a big data analysis where we can analyze the big data, the informations of the population health, and provide the, the needs or the requirement uh, tailoring to the population needs. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I think that's actually quite interesting to hear, you know, the three of you that are all coming from different sectors all, all share the same experience about how to be sustainable is understanding the ecosystem, understanding the needs of partners, understanding the needs of communication, and, and it's a, hopefully been a, a lesson to all of us. So if I can thank you uh, very much. Thank you for stepping in, Dr. Halda al Hajjaj, the director of DHE's Zabil Health Centre. Also, Niaz Mohammed, head of sales from the Lower Gulf Siemens Health and Ears. Thank you very much. And Dr. Fatih Mehmet-Gul, the CEO of the Faki 
University Hospital. Thank you very much. Can we get a round of applause? For today's speakers, the fireside chat.